Hey guys, sorry if I somehow look and sound worse than usual. I have COVID. I wanted to make a video for anyone who maybe still hasn't decided what class they should make their alt, and maybe you needed some help with that decision. Before I get into it though, I have two general pieces of advice. For one, don't make an alt if you don't feel like you need to. If you're someone with limited time or you're still going through the early tier 1 gearing process, then it's probably not worth your time to make an alt right now. It's probably not a good idea to divert attention away from your main class if you aren't even doing all that you should be with them each day. Once you've started hitting a wall with your upgrade materials or you find yourself finishing all of your daily content with nothing else to do with your time, then go ahead and power pass another character up to 50 so you can get the most out of your time. My second piece of advice is if you've genuinely fallen in love with a class and you want to make it your alt just because they're really fun, go ahead and do it. You might lose out on some efficiency, but if you're having way more fun playing as this alt than a character that you couldn't stand to play, then it's worth it. Having fun is still the end goal here. And also remember you can hold on to one of those power passes if you want for a class that might not be out yet, which is what I'm doing. All of my favorite classes aren't in the western release at the moment. Now, if you want to be as efficient as possible, then you're going to want to avoid making an alt with a very expensive class. And what do I mean by expensive? Well, some classes are going to require way more in the way of skill points, tripods, engravings, gems, and whatnot to make them useful to a team, making them way more expensive. This is mostly going to be DPS classes, since you're really going to need to get the most out of your engravings and gems and whatnot to maximize the damage of all of your abilities. The one primary exception to this for damage characters is the Shadow Hunter. The most popular build for the Shadow Hunter is one that focuses on being inside her demon transformation mode as much as possible. Her abilities when transformed don't have their own tripods or anything, so you don't need to worry as much about skill points and tripods and all that when you're focusing on being transformed all the time. You're also going to save a lot when it comes to gems, since you're not going to need a full suite of 11 high level gems to make her work. Two gems are all you're going to need. One for transformed damage, and the other for transformed cooldown reduction. That's it. So if DPS characters are on the more expensive side, then it would make sense that supportive characters like the Paladin, Bard, and Gunlancer are on the cheaper side. Especially for the Bard and Gunlancer, you don't really need a lot of engravings or gems or anything like that to be useful to a team. Damage characters really need to be picky about their gear, but supportive characters don't need to worry about that so much. Most of the buffs and heals and shields that they provide are fixed amounts and they can't be changed by gear. One other way you're going to save big with these classes is with healing potions. Bards, Paladins, and Gunlancers all have a lot of heals and shields to prevent you from needing to use a lot of health potions, which is obviously going to save you some money in the long run. And the Shadow Hunter too heals herself whenever she transforms, so the same applies to her. You can also get away with being less geared on support characters because they're always in such high demand. Every group is going to want a support of some kind, so if you're a paladin, bard, or gunlancer, you can have not perfectly optimized builds and teams are still going to want you a part of their group because you fit into any kind of content perfectly. Now outside of just supports and DPSs being different levels of expensive, there is another factor that plays into how expensive a class can be and that has to do with their popularity. I'll have a chart here that shows the general popularity of each class, but you probably don't want to be picking a class that's incredibly popular. If you're playing as one of the most popular classes in the game, then getting good engravings or gear for them from the auction house is probably going to be a bit of a nightmare, since these things are going to be in very high demand and the market's going to be very competitive around them. On the other hand, you probably don't want to pick classes that are the least popular in the game because gear that's good for them might be cheaper since a lot of people don't really want it, but it'll be way harder to come across. Class engraving books, for example, only drop for the class that you're playing as, so class engraving books for one of the most popular classes in the game are going to be way more plentiful than one of the lowest. With all this in mind, it's probably best to aim for somewhere in the middle of popularity, since gear is going to be pretty easy to come across and the market's not going to be ridiculously competitive around it. One last thing to maybe keep in mind when choosing an alt is to look for one that maybe shares the same engravings that your main does. Engravings are a huge deal, but they're also a massive pain to collect. Luckily, they're account-wide, so if you've read 60 skill books for a certain engraving, then maybe pick an alt that also wants to use that engraving. Not having to split your attention between all these different engravings can be a huge help. 
it'll also save you a lot of time and money. So in order of priority, I would say first, choose a class that you really, really love. If you're dead set on a certain class, but maybe you're worried about losing some efficiency because of it, I wouldn't sweat it too much. You're gonna need to spend more time to progress than other people will, but if that time is being spent playing a class that you love and are having a ton of fun with, then it's not really that much of a loss. The second priority is to maybe choose a supportive class or a shadow hunter if you're wanting to pick a damage character. These classes are typically on the cheaper side and you're gonna need to spend less time and resources on them compared to most others. Third most important would be to choose a class that shares the same engravings as your main, which can save you a huge headache in the future. And maybe the least important thing to worry about is choosing a class that's in the middle for popularity. Supply and demand isn't going to be a huge deal this early on in a game's life cycle, so it's not gonna have a tremendous effect on anything right now, but it's definitely worth keeping in mind. Hopefully this helped some of you guys choose an alt if you were still torn on who to pick. If this helped, consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.